In this video, we'll take a deep dive into the loss of thrust on takeoff and engine failure in flight scenarios, which are key components of our AQP for General Aviation training protocol here at Holiday Aviation. AQP is all about risk management and training for scenarios like engine failure that put pilots at risk. Quantifying that risk is a bit tricky, but here's what we know. According to the NTSB, since 1984, in the United States there have been 2,939 accidents classified as total loss of engine power, and of those, 339 resulted in at least one fatality. That's 11%. 1,365 of those accidents resulted in no injury, so that's about half. The first step in preparing for an engine failure after takeoff is getting to know your airport and what's around it. This is a satellite image of our home airport, the Jacksonville Executive at Craig Airport. So I'm currently driving on St. John's Bluff Road North, just passing the 295 interchange right now. This is just south of Craig Airport. You can see there's an overpass here, which obviously I wouldn't want to land on. There's power lines. So this is not a super ideal location. St. John's Bluff Road, 295 is probably a better option, but I want you guys to see just the volume of traffic and buildings and everything that's in the immediate vicinity of this airport property, which is not unusual when you consider that it's a busy Class Delta airport. It's 8 o'clock in the morning, so I just dropped my daughter off at school, and I'm on my way to pick up some supplies for the office, but I thought this would be a good opportunity to show you what it looks like from the ground, what all these potential emergency landing sites in the immediate vicinity of the airport property actually look like. So this next interchange up here, this traffic light is Atlantic Boulevard. This is the main intersection, and if you look straight ahead and to the right as I turn the corner here, um, you can see the end of the runway. We may even see an airplane. Um, landing. They're using runway five today. So if there's, yep, here comes an airplane right now. You may see it pass through the, the camera passing from left to right, landing on runway five. There it goes. So now I'm turning to drive east on Atlantic Boulevard. So again, it's eight o'clock in the morning on a Thursday. Lots of people on this road getting ready to get on their way to go to work. It's all kinds of retail, auto dealerships, power lines. You do not want to land your airplane on Atlantic Boulevard. This is just not a good option by any stretch of the imagination. So right past this traffic light is a major shopping center containing a Walmart. <clears throat> which is off the departure end of runway 14, or more or less on short final to runway 32 at Craig. We often joke that this is the Walmart one arrival. But as you can see, this is not somewhere where you'd wanna land your airplane. Yeah, there may be some open spaces in the Walmart parking lot. That would probably be the best option, but just not a whole lot of good places to land here. So this traffic light here is Kernan Boulevard and Atlantic. So when we look on the um, satellite image of the airport in just a few minutes, you'll see that Kernan is the road that uh, you would fly over if you were departing runway five, which is the active runway today. You can see the high tension power lines on either side of this road. There's lots of elementary schools churches, lots of houses, and in just a sec here, I'm going to make a left into the resident, residential neighborhood that um, is closest to the airport property, and the neighborhood itself is sort of oriented north-south along Kernan. It's kind of a long shotgun stretch of property. So I'm facing west now, 
and if you look straight ahead you'll see all those tall pine trees that's basically what you have to work with if you're landing straight ahead off the departure end of runway 5 is what you see in front of you right now so this road that I'm about to make a right or a left on is oriented north-south and on the west side of it is the airport so this is one of those cases where even though I know a lot of people say no never ever turn around to get back to the airport I get it if you don't practice it that can be a dangerous thing to do but it, this really is not an option so it's two weeks later now on a Tuesday morning and I just want to show you what Atlantic Boulevard headed the other direction looks like so now we're headed downtown there's gonna be a lot more traffic this way so this is immediately off the departure end of runway 23 at Craig so that overpass straight ahead is interstate 295 and as you'll see in the blog post that I link below the shoulder of 295 is actually my out if I have an engine failure departing runway 23 you'll see here there's just a ton of retail pretty much the same situation in the previous video when you're headed um, eastbound but unlike departing runway 5 where you could land on runway uh, 32 if you had to when you're departing runway 23 pretty much your only option is to turn back to the airport or head for the median of 295 or the shoulder of 295 because uh, this area over here is just not an option. The whole point of this video is to get you thinking about what your options are at your airport in your airplane. For us here at Craig Airport, which has two intersecting runways, a good option for us in our Cessna singles is to land on runway 32 if departing runway 5, or similarly to land on runway 23 if departing runway 14. This works well for us if we're still over the airport when the engine failure occurs. Dana went around because we were headed up to Hilliard, but clearly we would have survived. Turn on SR25, clear tire, no delay, right turn on course, runway 5, clear for takeoff. Clear for takeoff 5 with a right turn at 9N725. Clear right. 201, we have one clear, more departure, clear. prior to arrival, runway 5, clear to land. One more departure uh, prior to the arrival, runway 5, clear to land, clear check 201. Really no significant crosswind. Yeah, normal takeoff with a climb out at VY. All right, we're making good power. Airspeed's coming alive. We've got our 40 knots by 400 feet easily. Engine instruments look good. And we're just going to let her fly off the pavement when she's ready. About as advertised. And we're going to climb FBY. Tower, clear check 640, turn to final five. We have the circle It's giving us five. about 600 feet a minute. Perfect. There'll be one departure prior to arrival, number two behind that traffic, runway five. So we're at 200 feet, feet approximately five, over check, runway 32. We're just approaching the edge of the airport property now at about 350 feet. There's 400. And there's 500 where I see I could easily make it back to the airport property, no problem. So in this scenario, I'm not really interested in the runway itself, but in accessing any flat space on the airport property. The grass, the taxiway, look at all that space there. 
All right, so the rough idea here is that we're going to pretend that we took off from some airport that's at 1,500 feet field elevation over the beach, and there's our big beach runway straight ahead. What I'm going to do here is set up for a climb at VY, and at 500 feet, which will be 2,000 on the altimeter, we're going to pull the throttle to idle. We're going to push, turn, and pretend like we're going to land coming the other way. This this is good because we have a nice clear sight line um, that we can use to mimic what our runway would be. So we're outside that little cloud bank, and the area is clear. We've been turning, looking all around. We'll just lift the wings again, make sure nobody snuck up on us. And there's traffic. Somebody way out there. Yep. Yep. 2,000 above. Yep. Okay, so there goes the power. We're going to push that nose down. Again, nothing crazy here. Look at the airspeed. Look at the bank angle. Nothing crazy. Two hundred to go. So if that was my runway right there, I easily could have made it. A little bit tight, and I even could have been a little slower than that. So let's try that again, and I'm gonna slow down a little bit and get closer to VY when I started. That wasn't a great demo, so we'll just head north here. All right, we're on the money right there. 1500, starting our climb. This time I'm at an airspeed a little closer to my DMMS, a little closer to my best glide. My rate of descent is a lot lower this time. I did a little better job managing that, but notice this is just a nice normal descending turn. There's no stall warning. There's no nothing. I made the 180 that time in less than 300 feet. And so if, maintain so, DMS all time. So. Yep. And so if I was lined up on my runway here, I totally could have made it. So it's just so important to practice this and know what you and your airplane are capable of because sometimes landing straight ahead at your airport is just really not the not the best option actually. But everybody has to figure that out for themselves in their airplane at their location. All we're trying to communicate to folks is that you've got to figure it out to maximize your chances of success and survival in case something happens. Okay, so what we want to show you in this little segment is um, kind of what you want to be thinking and looking for when you're actually not able to land on a runway. It's more of a, uh, so almost like a little somewhat um, less than straight dirt road. Okay, because you may not always have the opportunity to land on a runway. And what I teach my students is, is I don't care what it is that you're looking at as far as where you're going to have to put this airplane down. You want to picture it as a runway. It kind of helps alleviate some of that fear of landing in a pretty scary spot, you know. So picture it as a runway. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to set up at about 1,500 feet and turn crosswind, and you're going to see here in a second in the video the little uh, patch of dirt road that I'm going to pretend is my only option. There's certainly other options in this area, otherwise I wouldn't be doing this exercise right here. So right under the left wing tip, you can see that little uh, sort of, I don't know, not quite straight section of dirt road there. Okay. Let's pretend that's all we've got. So not the paved road, but that little dirt road. That's right. Got it. Okay, so now I'm going to simulate my engine out, and I'm at uh, about 1,300 feet. And again, I'm pretending this is all I've got. Obviously going to be scary if it's a real-life situation. But again, picture it as a runway. It might be uh, a nice road. It might be a big field. Maybe it's a frozen lake in Minnesota in the wintertime. It doesn't take a whole lot of ice to hold a... Uh, small airplane up. If you take a look right under the wingtip, right there where that little curve is, okay, that's going to be the approach end of my uh, spot where I'm going to land. I'm at a thousand feet. So again, I'm going to go to my 10 degrees of flaps, pitch for about 70 to 75, extend down to my low key point, which is the 45 degree angle off the departure end of that little section of uh, dirt road. And I'm going to make a left turn here, put in 20 degrees. And the way I've set this up, I'm going to have a slight tailwind, but that doesn't matter for this exercise. Turning base, I'm at 700 feet. Again, I like to be between 7 and 500 on the base. 
And I've got that little section made, so I'm going to go ahead and extend the flaps all the way down. Turn final. And then I can actually add a slip to pinpoint where I touch down. Just checking for traffic here. Slipping down, and the only thing I've got is this little section of dirt road here. And you can see with the slip and the proper setup, boom, I'm right on it. And we'll go around. That's what it looks like when you're landing somewhere that's not a runway. Make sure, Rich, fuel selector is set to both. Flaps are up and landing lights on. Windows and seatbelts good? Yep. Yes, ma'am. Good to go. Clear left and clear right. Clear left. Cool, friends. Looper all the way. Mixture, prop. Fuel selector, cow flaps. All right. Here we go. There is full power. <clears throat> Engine instruments are in the green. Airspeed is alive. And just keep it at VY. Okay. All right, there's 350. 380. There's four. And we're doing a left turn? Yep. Okay. With the power out. Yep. So 480. Okay, throttle all the way back. And you're going to lower the nose and throttle all the way back. And what you're going to do is you're going to put that nose just below the horizon. Okay. This was the pilot's first time trying this maneuver. She never got anywhere near stall speed and kept the plane under control the entire time. Two and a half miles south of the field of Fernandina. And we got some maneuvers right here over the airport to the north of the airport before we come in. Forward. All right, gears and then, down and just hold what you got. Is this one of those things where I could be like, don't oh no. Don't bring your nose up. Yep, yep keep don't bring your nose, keep the nose up. down. Yeah, it's, you're going to be tempted to bring nose up. All right, now give me 10 degrees of flaps. Feel this little bump you're going to get here. All right, more flaps all the way down. Be ready with that throttle. You're not going to need it. You're going to make it. All right, we didn't make it as far as I thought. Oh, dang. Gear is down. Yep. But, but we made it. it from 500. Damn. On a hot day, you're going to need more. Right. Yep. You know, Seven, on a hot day maybe loaded, like I would... like 700? I would, yeah, I might even say, look, I'm not going to turn back unless, unless I'm at 1,000. Now, again, like Meredith said, rightly so... If you can make it back to that grass, that's, that's better than that putting counts. it in the water. Right, yeah. How big is that? Like, can I put the plane down in that amount of time or, you know what I mean? Like, Well, if that's, if that's all you had, which yeah. you'd, you'd want to be really good at coming in, um, or doing a short field approach type of thing. Right. Um, you know, but you know, if you have a short field landing, you've got throttle to use it. You know, if you have an engine out, you don't have the throttle theoretically, right? Now, if you if you take a look down at that field. Okay, yeah. I mean, it's not the greatest, but it would probably work in a pinch. It would work. It's and here's the thing to consider, too. You've got that open space to get the plane down and settled and then start decelerating. Right. So if you ended up running uh, off it on right. the other end. At least you're on the ground. You're going, right. you're going 10 miles an hour at that point. Right. You're not going to hurt yourself, right? Yeah, that's fair. So no matter what you're flying or where you're flying it, you have to do your homework and consider all of your options in the unlikely event of an engine failure, especially if the engine failure occurs immediately after takeoff, where your risk is the greatest. Your airport might be surrounded by flat farm fields, or it might be tucked in a mountain valley, or it might be stuffed in the middle of a densely populated residential or industrial area. Maybe you fly an airplane that's equipped with a ballistic parachute system. No matter what your situation is, you must take the time to assess your options and practice so you don't end up like this guy.